Hey collectors, Anthony from Hatches Not Here, and today we're going to take a look at a baggie full of toys. Uh, this is actually the ships that are in the Micro Machine Star Trek Collector Set 3, but I never found it in whole, and it's online like super expensive. But I individually bought the ships and sets and on their own, so I finally have it on. And then, um, like typically, one of the sets come with a box here that describes what's in them. So it's, it's, as you see, this is kind of how I got them in three pack sets for the most part. So when we get back, we're going to take a look at these ships. In this assorted bag of micro machines, as I had mentioned before pretty much makes up the collector set three although i forgot to mention uh one extra piece would be the um, bajoran sail ship i don't believe this is in that collector set now uh this ship the array from voyager and the kazon torpedo also from voyager are super rare super sought after ships with the enterprise e so these I think the E, a new, a good looking E is like 60 bucks. The ship's like 40. And I think the Kazon Torpedo and the um, Array are somewhere around 40. Although there are people online who want way more than that and they're not worth it. I mean, look, these are barely what, two, three ounces of weight at most. I mean, the Enterprise E is kind of heavy compared to the, the sailing ship. But, I mean, those are literally the only two I'm missing from the set of having the entire collection. Now, if you look at the box here, this is the back of a three pack box, I believe. And uh, this is a yeah, from the original series. So, or no, Next Generation, that's the Enterprise uh, D. So you can see uh, all of the ships that were on it. And um, so the original series had Botany Bay, Klingon Battle Cruiser, Rum and the Bird of Prey. I think I have the, yeah, yeah, so I, I think this is in one of the collector sets. Galio 2, the K-7 Space Station, the Enterprise 1701. Uh, I believe that is also in one of the collector sets. Uh, Klingon Bird of Prey, Federation Space Dock, Reliant. Yep, definitely. Vulcan Shuttle, Grissom, Excelsior. Yep. Uh, I, cause I, I, some of them are in the set 1, some of them are set 2. Like I believe these guys are in the set 2 D Romulan ship in the Vorcha Klingon Cruiser. Then there's the C, the Borg ship Ferengi, and um, then um, the Shuttlecraft, uh, the Warbird, and the Stargazer, and then Deep Space Nine, Cardassian Gala Warship, and the Runabout. And then I think, as I'm looking at these guys here, uh, I have, uh, so here, the ship uh, 26, set 26, is the one where I don't have these two. These are the most valuable. It's because these were not in the collector set. And these are the, the Torpedo and the Array. So, th don't have them, not because they weren't in the collector set. They're like legit, other than the, it says Bajoran Sailing Vessel, other than that, not in the collector set. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm, I'm iffy on the Bajoran Vessel not being in the collector set. Now. Anyway, so um, next up is the Klingon Bird of Prey, Enterprise D, Enterprise B, Bajoran Fighter, Claystron. Uh, uh, ship, uh, Midoran ship, M Miradoran, and Space Dock Shuttle. I hate this is ugly. It's an ugly ship, but I get it. It's a Space Dock ship. Uh, the Bounty and the Farragut, uh, which are, yeah, they're they're down here. Um, and then there's uh, Defiant, Jimitar, Saratoga, also down here. Uh, Voyager, Kazon Fighter, Marquis, also here. Let's see. Um, the Raider, the Numiri ship, and the Kazan Mother ship, also here. Uh, the Krinima vessel, the sailing ship, and the Cardassian uh, Obsidian order ship, yep, all here. And, uh, and then again, as I said, don't have these two. So you're probably wondering, how did I get some of these things? Well, uh, the Voyager shuttlecraft I didn't have. I didn't have the Enterprise E, which again is from the Collector Set 3. I actually um, bought them individually, but most of the other ones I bought in their three packs. Here is a single ship pack. Um, I don't remember what ship this goes to because it only gives you the number, and um, it tells you like all like the the individual series for each ship, whatever, blah blah blah. And you can see that this is before they went to the uh, 
this final set here, so because you don't have nothing beyond it. So it looks like, just based on the the way they release them, they kind of like, well, I want to squeeze out this one final set, and that one final set because it wasn't collector edition material is why it's so valuable. So let's uh, start going through the things. So I want to start with Enterprise E. I it is beat the crap. Um, it values for about 60 in, in the market. Um, there are things wrong with it. Um, the previous previous owner uh, somehow burned a, a wing here. That makes no sense. That's crazy. So the bottom that they sell is is just messed up. And then um, it's just the lighting here. You can see the bottom of the nacelle is messed up. Then they, for some reason, had glued the hole in the bottom of the ship. I've since fixed it and moved most of the glue, trying not to damage the ship itself. And as you see, I can get a stand in it. Uh, not perfect, but it's in there. Let's see if I can adjust it. Nope, I can't adjust. But, I mean, you can see the, the, the glue is still kind of in there. And I don't want to force it too much because I don't want to damage it. I just paid 40 bucks for it, you know? But uh, the stand can get in there. That's, that's the really important part so it can be displayed properly. And, of course, these stands were originally clear, but they have yellowed over time. But uh, it looks freaking good. That's the Enterprise E, sir. Yeah, it's just... Oh, it's so pretty. If you don't look at the bottom, it's perfect. Uh, you need to see this. It's a little bit of color change over time, which is expected in these plastics. So next up we have... The Saratoga, because it's a Reliant class, except it doesn't have the top bit on here, I believe. Uh, oh God, I cannot remember. So I feel like Saratoga was um, Cisco's ship before Deep Space Nine, but don't quote me on that. But uh, just look at how nice it is. Uh, a little bit of dirt, <laughs> but it's just it's nicely muted colors. Oh, looks like one of the cells are slowly coming off. Can I? Yeah. yeah. Actually, it looks like it might be just a, a QA issue that I just just noticed. But I mean, look at that. That is particularly nice. It's clean looking. So then we have. I believe this is the Maquis ship, and uh, straightforward. I just love the detail on these ships, and uh, yeah, it's just it is spectacular. Uh, tail lights or external vents or boosters or whatever. Um, so, I mean, this ship is from, I believe, Voyager. And this is the one that um, uh, that the Maquis, or Tuvok, was being a spy on. I believe that's the ship. Don't quote me on it. But, uh, you know. So, here is the Bounty. Uh, yeah, I believe this is the HMS Bounty. And I, one, a few ships have features like this. The Klingon ships have this wing feature, which I, I really dig. It gives you the, the battle mode, or you can go to the normal flight mode. And uh, it is nicely decorated. Uh, it has the ship's... No yes, yeah, it's Bounty right here. So the ship's name on there. Why is it in English? This is a Klingon ship. That makes no sense. But anyway, yeah, it's, just, it's a cool, menacing-looking ship. Uh, yeah, look at that. The rear thruster. Oh, that's a pretty ship. Next up, we have the Cardassian. I believe this is the Obsidian ship. And uh, just a lot of yellow. And uh, just look at that front panel. Just uh, such detail. And the ship is obviously multiple layers. It's not one piece. Because you can see this might be glued up on here. But uh, that is spectacular. It is, that is a good looking ship. So next up, this is one of the ones I just recently acquired, and uh, it is the I'm trying to find the name, the Kalestron ship, and uh, it's nice blue coloring. You can tell that it's um, gotten a little dirty or aged over time in the center here, because I don't think that's the actual it's supposed to be the color. Uh, I guess people have handled it. I mean, I'm handling it, so why not? Uh, but uh, it's, it's a nice addition to my collection. And uh, I should point out that any of these ships that aren't like the top of the line ships uh, retail for about five bucks a piece. So if you're looking to create a collection and you're not you're not willing to spend a lot of money, you can get most of these for about five bucks each. Um, you can probably get the three packs 
for closer to uh, 20 bucks. I, I think like uh, a number of them are on eBay right now. So I, I bought these two recently. And uh, this is the, I want to say Kazon Mothership. And uh, the Kazon have this weird cocoon design. And uh, so this is their fighter, I believe. And this is their raider, or I might have them backwards. Uh, or maybe this is the raider and that's the fighter and that's the mothership. I don't know. They look like cocoons. If we hang them from a tree, I would think that a, a Pokemon's about to hatch. Okay? They all have similar design, just this brown and purple with this just tan underlay. Um, it is a common design feature, as is most ships. I mean, the, the Federation is mostly gray, the Klingons are mostly green, the Romulans are blue and green. Um, so, yeah, it's a common design feature. And uh, here's the one I've owned for a, for a while. Uh, at first, uh, when I was looking at it before I was buying these from the other guy, he was like, man, it looks like the colors are off. Maybe it's my camera. The colors look perfectly fine. Uh, this one hasn't seemingly aged very much. It just it looks as good as new, except I've got my slime on it. But uh, other than that, that uh, it is a spectacular Kazon ship. So new to uh, my collection is this guy here. This is the Numeri ship. And I honestly don't remember where these guys are from. It just looks, first off, it looks like a Death Star. Uh, or not Death Star. What is that called? Um, the, the ships from Star Wars, the big ones. Uh, not the Death Star. The one before it looks like a piece of cheese flying in space. Uh, but it's nice. It has black and cyan and purple on it. It's a pretty ship. Uh, so just really nice to have it. And because of the dark colors in this one, it, it doesn't look like it's aged a day. Which is spectacular for a, a, this, this 25-year-old ship. So, yay. I'm going to put that aside here. One of the first ones I ever got, USS Defiant. It's a little bit of fading in the air, but that, that's what I get for touching it. A little bit of fading here on the Annex, the 74205. Uh, but I mean, ship is fairly simple. Not a lot going on here. I mean, it's a tiny ship. If you play Star Trek Online, it is weaponed up though. So like it is. But look at all that fine detail. It, it kind of looks like camouflage on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is just one excellent ship. Now we finally get to talk about the Bajoran sailing ship. Uh, if you remember from Deep Space Nine, Cisco and his son put the ship together as a project and then went sailing. And as I said, um, it, this is a kind of an expensive ship. Uh, the guy I was dealing with for the Enterprise E was like, ooh, that's, you know, I think he has one as well. Because, I mean, again, you could buy it in a three pack. But, uh, yeah, it, definitely a nice ship. It was a good heart full filled story on the uh the series so yeah this is the uh this is a nice uh nice ship there so another new ship is uh for me is this one now i am not sure if the white on it is me or paint coming off uh it, or you know it's supposed to be on here or not i feel like it's not it feels like it was on against something that it shouldn't have been but it you know whatever i pay five bucks for it and this is the and I'm looking up the name, and uh, oh, it's the Bajoran Fighter. Ooh, wow, the color is so different from the box art. So that is interesting. But here's the Bajoran Fighter, and uh, first off, didn't know Bajor had ships. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously, how did they get the Deep Space Nine? But this this one is, is uh, as it it's, uh, obviously there's a little, some paint coming off. It's a little bit of fading right here. It's a nice brown ship that apparently used to be orange. So that's interesting, but uh, yeah, that's the Bajoran ship right there. So next up is the, and I believe this is the Kremina vessel. Uh, in Voyager, they hijacked the ship, and uh, I think this is the two-parter um, Year of Hell episode, but uh, it's very long. It's a very long ship full of very, uh, I want to say fighty? Uh, warrior people and uh, it is it's not as detailed as some of them but it, white and yellow with some black accents uh, it, it's a uh, it is it is a uh, nice looking it's different and, and it, they shouldn't be all the same frankly um, okay so another new requirement and this one is actually from that 25th or 26th set for Voyager and this is the Voyager shuttlecraft now I 
did not have this, obviously, because I didn't have set 26. But we see Voyager shuttlecraft here. And I, quote me on this. Is this the one that Tom Paris modifies for the uh, Warp 10 test? Um, or is this just the regular one? Because I, I think the one that Paris had had, like, this new front window bit going on with kind of, like, the 360-degree view. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a updated shuttle. And to pair another shuttle, here is the space dock shuttle, which is just, I think if you, I think this is in the movie, uh, I believe this was from the movie, and, um, as I'm looking at the chart, it says Star Trek movies, yeah, so this is the one where the crew sees the Enterprise for the first time, and just look at the evolution of, I think it was 80 to 100 year difference, 120 years different maybe, and let's say about 100 years difference between shuttle technology and just, uh, just the look of them. I mean, this one's so simple compared to this one. It's just pure layout and design. Like, look at that. Just sweet. Jem'Hadar. This is their um, their attack ship. And uh, it's just a, a lot of purple going on here. I don't know how well it comes out in the camera. I'm, I'm thinking it comes out more of a blue color. Which is funny because I did another video where the same thing happened. Um... And, uh, yeah, it looks like, and, 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 you know, this is just my opinion, it looks kind of like a spider. Uh, like, the legs are here, here's the thorax, uh, the back end, is that the thorax or the thorax the front end? It looks like a spider. And, uh, um, maybe, maybe the other way around looks like kind of, kind of scorpion-y? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, this is a gem radar ship. It is, it is pretty, well decorated. Another new one is this ship, <laughs> looks like a squid. And uh, it is the Midorn, Mid Midorn, don't, don't quote me on that. It's a very small, simple ship, yellow and gray, um, some red lighting back there. Uh, I don't remember where these guys are from. It says Deep Space Nine. It must have been like a very specific, like special episode or something. There are definitely not repeat customers. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very simple. Very, It's actually probably the lightest ship in this set. And uh, yeah, there you go. So, we're moving on. I was going to try to save the best for last. This is the Farragut. Uh, I'm trying to remember who served on this before something else. But uh, this is one of those kind of like refit galaxy class where they move the crap above it and below it. And you, you can see the design is similar to that of the Enterprise-D. Uh, I believe that the dish is actually larger. Because it kind of shifts all the contents forwards. And you can see the uh, nacelles are tucked underneath and the uh i guess this is the engineering or no engineering would be down through here this would be kind of like the dock and stuff um and then of course the bridge is still here in the source the saucer so yeah that that's uh it's pretty nifty it's, it's a different take on the the galaxy class and uh yeah i i don't hate it speaking of <laughs> enterprises here is the enterprise the original 1701 and one of the things that, other than discoloration, is kind of warping. And um, this kind of just goes back and happens. You can use an air dryer in a medium setting and uh, warm it up to, to try you know, hold it into place to get it to, to stay. But uh, other than that, I mean, that's, if that's the worst thing that happens to the ship, it's fine. But over time, it's done some other things where things have become misaligned or stretched, which is a little bit annoying. And you can see the dish in front here. And uh, we go to the side, you can see the, the paint. It, these ships, despite being so small, have some good detail. Docking bay, uh, the nacelles. And uh, yeah, all in all, it's just pretty, just a, a good representation of the Enterprise. And then finally, because uh, this, this was also one of the first ships I got, uh, I loved, I love Voyager first. I think Voyager might be my favorite ship. But this one in particular, it's a lot of gray. It seems like a big ship. Uh, which is funny. You can see the, the 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 captain's yacht in here. You can see the the front end. You can see the nacelles are, are pretty good. Uh, just like the Klingon cruiser, the nacelles adjust, and if you and they come off. But if you remember from the the show, when it goes into warp, the nacelles go kind of upwards, and that was to fix a problem with um, something that happened in, in Next Generation, where there was tearing in space time. Due to warp engine use, so uh, the, the answer for Voyager anyway was the cells to do that, if I'm correct. Uh, 
But yeah, that that is that is the the Voyager there. Now, um, obviously, you're watching. You're probably Star Trek fan. Let me know in the comments. Favorite ship, favorite series, favorite captain. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.